Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. If you... Here we are once again, coming to you from Bruce Campbell's backyard. This is the Jolly Roger, the Dirt Lord. Terrorists. The Scottish government has released Lockerbie bomber Abdel Basset Ali Megrahi on compassionate grounds. He's suffering from terminal prostate cancer and will return to Libya to die. 270 people died when Pan Am Flight 103 blew up nearly 21 years ago. It was December 1988. Pan Am Flight 103, on its way from London to New York, explodes over the Scottish town of Lockerbie, blown up by a bomb hidden in a suitcase. 270 people were killed, 11 of those residents of Lockerbie on the ground. The bulk of the passengers on board Pan Am Flight 103, Americans on their way home for Christmas. Lockerbie, from that moment on, would forever be associated with one of the worst terrorist atrocities on British soil. It wasn't for another 13 years that the man accused of the bombing was found guilty. Abdel Basit Ali Mohammed Al Megrahi, one time security chief for Libyan Arab Airlines, was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum term of 27 years before he would become eligible for parole. Even then, some relatives of the victims say they weren't sure the right man was ever caught. I found the trial process confusing and quite difficult to understand because much of the evidence was circumstantial. So while the court convicted him, his co-conspirator, who was his co-accused, was found innocent. And the fact of the matter is that McGrahi could not have acted alone. McGrahi has always maintained his innocence and is currently appealing his conviction for a second time. Now diagnosed with terminal prostate cancer, he has also requested release on compassionate grounds. Jim Swire, whose daughter Flora was killed at Lockerbie, says he should be allowed home, but that his appeal must not be dropped. The appeal seems to us to be the way forward towards the next stage of finding out what really happened. And for that to stop, I think, would be a disaster both for us and for Scotland in the long run. But others convinced of McGrahi's guilt are appalled he might ever see freedom. This man killed 270 people. He's getting medical treatment in Scotland. Oh, oh, whoa, whoa, so sad. Why aren't you sorry for me? My daughter is dead. She was 20 years old. It's believed McGrahi may have just months to live. His fate, though, still tears at the hearts of all those whose lives were wrecked by Pan Am 103's fatal last flight. I want the American people to know that the United States government did all that we could prior to the, this, this, this decision being made uh, to make sure that this decision would not, in fact, be made. It was the worst terrorist atrocity ever to hit Britain, 270 killed. The Lockerbie bomber, Abdul Basit Al Megrahi, was jailed for life for blowing up Pan Am Flight 103. But he may yet be released on compassionate grounds. The former Libyan agent convicted of the 1988 bombing has terminal prostate cancer and doesn't have long to live. Last week, six Libyan delegates reportedly came for talks with the man who will decide Al Megrahi's fate, Scottish Justice Secretary Kenny McCaskill. He visited Al Megrahi in Greenock Prison, and it was reported the Libyan team visited their former agent behind bars as well. Libya want their man back and made a prisoner transfer request last May. They're still waiting for a response. That now looks imminent. Terrorists being let loose, 
it's kind of old news to some people. Uh, you know, of course, so is Michael Jackson, you know, after two months. But this is something that, you know, this is something that should be brought out more on the news. And then let's just go over this. The Lockerbie Bomber, Al McGraw, he was set free. And uh, Gaddafi, we all remember him, Muammar Gaddafi. A lot of younger people may not remember him, but, uh, you know, a lot of people will think back to before the Gulf War and the Desert Storm. Um, we had a little issue with a little country named Lydia. And where did this man go? And where was he well, brought in with welcome open arms? Have you seen it? Now, if you if you can understand now what I'm saying there, and, and the man who welcomed... This Al Magrahi, the bomber, who killed 270 people. The man who welcomed him with open arms and tears in a banquet. He's going to be in New Jersey. And I don't think it's right to threaten it, threaten him, threaten the house. That, that, that could just, it, it promotes more violence. That's just lowering yourselves to their level. That's like blowing up an abortion clinic. You're not making a statement. You're hurting people. But was he set free for oil? Was he set free for a reason? What was he set free for? They say it's because he's dying. Three months to live. But was that the reason? Well, that's the question we want to know. But this was a man who, who had, had basically butchered people. And uh, I, I have to give that, you know, uh, that the Scottish... And, you know, the, some Americans that were involved in this decision, I, I particularly think the Scottish, because I think that they did it out of mercy. And uh, I appreciate their mercy, but uh, mercy only goes so far. I mean, this man showed no mercy, and he, he, may not, he may not show it again. He, you know, we don't know that a man like him will not go out, just like any other criminal, and repeat. And the percentage of repeat criminals is, is, is astoundingly frightening. And this man is about to die. Who's to say he won't do it himself next time and be there? Then there'll be no way to punish him. And in his eyes, he'll be doing right by Allah or God in, in their in the you know in our language. He'll be doing right by him. You're killing infidels. But what do we why do we keep hearing about Qaddafi? Um you know, why have we not done something about this man? Uh he has you know blatantly, you know, slapped us in the face. Uh, you know, I'm not saying that we should do what we did in Iraq or Iran over the years, but uh, this man has definitely caused a problem. And though I don't think that we should, you know, be, be the heavy hand of the world, it should be spoken against, at least, you know, heavily by the president, uh, that what they did was wrong and... You know, God help us if it was for oil. And I'm sure that, you know, that probably goes beyond a level, you know, beyond just the president. There's a whole cabinet of czars, and uh, there's the representatives and senators, and a lot of other people. But 270 people lost their lives. Their families' lives were shattered. Their friends, loved ones, children, grandmothers, aunts, daughters, friends, neighbors. They were all on board that plane for somebody. And that that's that's just my opinion, is that this man I understand showing mercy. But I think for justice sakes, showing mercy might have been better to execute him so that he didn't have to go through the pain of dying of such a, a terrible disease. I think that would have been much more appropriate for justice. Uh, you may find that wrong, but that's just my opinion. Well, that's what I'm here for, to tell you what's going on and why, and to give you my, my opinion a little bit of, of, you know, what I think. And I am here for the people, because that is what it's all about.